Well, hey guys, welcome back to Fisty Five, uh, Fistic Java Save the Universe. I want to do a actually pretty quick video on the current meta in Star Citizen. I, is there a meta? Is there not a meta? And this is more pertaining to um, combat, ship, FPS, uh, mining, not mining combat, but mining. <laughs> Um, but I want to start with, I guess, what I'm most familiar with, and that would be actual ship combat. Um, so you can see I have the DPS calculator up here, the Urkel.games, E-R-K-U-L dot games. E -R -K -U -L um, it's, I rely on this website so much. <laughs> so I wanted to go through some stuff. Um, since there was uh, the nerf of the weapons back in 314 and... There have been some other changes, tweaks to the flight model and things like that over the past year. The meta meta has changed quite a bit. And um, it used to be you kind of arm your ship up with with energy weapons, lasers and uh, ballistics. And you had enough supply of ballistics that you could go around and shoot people. You could do three or four, maybe five. But usually three or four missions, uh, bounty hunter missions, and then you'd have to go resupply. Um, back in those days, <laughs> like like it's a long time ago, but like a year ago, missiles worked. They didn't always hit the target, but they worked. Um, ballistics worked better. I just felt like back then we had a much more robust dogfighting type of system. Um, and... You know, I've been playing lately and I've just haven't been interested. I haven't liked it. It's not it's not fun for me anymore. Not that it's unfun, but it's just not it's just not fun. So let's talk about what we can do with our ships cuz we can't put ballistics on there. <laughs> um and the reason is is because on something as big as a Vanguard Warden it comes stock with a Revenant, a Ballistic Gatling, probably my favorite ballistic weapon in the game. Um, but it has 240 rounds. I mean, I've said it before, a, a modern 2022 F-18 Legacy F-18 Alpha Charlie. They got 576, 578 rounds in the nose of an airplane today. And we can't fit that many rounds with the similar sized Gatling gun in a spaceship. Yeah. So you can see there's a lot of frustration there. I'm still upset about the nerf and I think I'm not upset that they nerfed it. I get that they, we need to do a rebalance and stuff, but it, it's, it's been a long time. It's been over six months. It's been eight months and we've seen like almost nothing happen. I know Yogi's over there plugging away at CIG, but uh, we don't even have a hint of anything coming up, really. Um, my other problem is that the NPCs that you fight have unlimited <laughs> ammo. And I know this is a lot of people know about this. Some people don't. But yeah, I when you go up against that eclipse that has two size twos and it seems like there's an eclipse on every freaking mission. Uh, yeah, they're going to keep shooting you infinitely because they don't have an ammo capacity apparently um well yes we have the bigger advantage but it is pve i like a challenge but at the same time uh, you know I, i'd like to have a i don't know i guess equal footing especially when it's one versus four one versus five um and then you add atmosphere into that it it can be pretty tough um i'm not sure how new people in a starter ship even if it's a mustang are going to fare on some missions like starter tracker training missions. When you have to go into atmosphere, fly around with a horrible, the atmosphere flight model is horrible. Uh, and you have to go fly around and try to avoid all the ballistics with the, that small, small hull hit points and the small shields. Um, maybe that's a marketing thing to make people buy better ships that fly in atmosphere better. I don't know. I used to, I think when they first came out, it was very gimmicky with the atmosphere mission. I'm like, oh, this is cool, more challenge. And then it really is, it's more death. And and the reason is because the servers are so bad and you have back to back to back to back nonstop server dynamic events, which actually load 
most of the servers up pretty pretty thick with players, and the the performance is just so bad. Uh, missiles don't work constantly. Um, there's no point in ever using ballistics really, and because you're just gonna waste them. So anyway, let's get on with uh the meta loadout hashtag rant right. Um, so I have up here a Vanguard Warden, and I picked this. This is uh, one of the ships I like to fly all the time. Vanguard series, I like them in general. But you see, it comes, it's the only Vanguard that comes stock with the laser cannon. And right now, the laser cannon is kind of the meta over the laser repeater. It used to be the repeater. The, the more shots you got on the, with the repeater, the, the better you did. However, as they nerfed a lot of things, uh, that came out, especially with the Ion and the Inferno, because the Ion was just wrecking everything and they severely nerfed it back. They actually made all laser cannons fire faster and not as fast as a repeater, mind you, but the laser cannons have higher alpha damage. So with the power capacity. You pretty much are the same with a repeater and a cannon. So. Ultimately, even though the DPS doesn't look right, you actually the more shots you get on target with the cannon, the the higher you you know, the more damage you're going to do. So let's take a look real quick. Let's take this MVMSA off. We'll put on the GVSR. These are size two um, weapons. So the GVSR laser repeater does 148 sustained DPS. This one's obvious. It does less DPS than the laser cannon. Um, I don't know why it says 440 right there. Probably meaning all four, but uh, oh, it's talking about burst damage. That's right, because I forgot Urkel changed. Um, but really, the sustained DPS is what we're looking for. So the GVS are sustained DPS, and note it fires way faster, and but it's 148 versus the cannon, which is 254. Really good example of why you should stick with the cannon. Um, the, the GVSR, the fire rate here is 600 rounds per minute. You don't even have 600 aim <laughs> that you can fire per minute. Um, you have just a few seconds worth. Um, whereas the MVSA, its fire rate is 220. That's much more reasonable, even though you still don't have 220 ammo, um, in your, in your power capacity, even if you're maxed out, um, in laser or energy weapon power. So. I like to stick with the laser cannons for most of my builds nowadays. Um, as far as the ballistics up here go, you can't use the Revenant. It's it's I would love to. Um, the Revenant has fires at 900 rounds a minute. Look how much damage it does. 1032. But you have 240 rounds and they go really fast. I mean, probably one mission um, like an HRT or an MRT, something like that. It's gone. Uh, ERTs, it's gone real early. So you you'd either have to really save it for once the shields are down to get all that hull damage or just do it. I do not use it at all. So, um, so we're going to forego the Revenant and we're just going to mount a size five laser cannon on this thing. And it's hard to see down here. The Omni Sky 15. As you can see down at the bottom of the screen, oh, you can't see my mouse. But at the very bottom of the screen, you can see that the Omni Sky goes for 59,300 um, at these three di different places. It's the cheapest of the size five laser cannons. If we go down to like the Light Strike 5, it's 60,000. You can only buy it at New Babbage. And the uh, M7A is 76,000 and you can only buy it. Well, you can buy it at different places. However, the sustained DPS is 583. For the Light Strike, it's 583. For the Omni Sky, it's 583. They're all the same DPS, right? So the meta today is not using it at all. Um, or I'm sorry, not. The meta today is to use the cheapest one. There's no point in going and paying more for an M7 or uh, going for the light strike because you, what's the point? It's the exact same DPS. It's, it may have a different aesthetic. If you, if you really need the aesthetic and the look of that weapon, then get it. If you're more like me 
where you're worried about, you know, spending unnecessary money, just go with the cheapest one. Use Urkel, find the cheapest one. So it's going to be the Omni Sky, right? And then here's the other thing that I've been turned on to with some Facebook groups and some other players and some comments on the videos, especially with the Vanguard. If you throw in two distortion cannons and you could do repeaters as well, but I use distortion cannons. I use two of the size two distortion cannons and two of the laser cannons. So those are four size two weapons and then a size five laser cannon. You one, you're going to take down shields really, really fast Two, while the distortions don't really damage systems right now. I mean, not really, um, especially on fighters, but this build right here will take down a ship. Not as fast as the old days with ballistics and energy, but it takes down a ship pretty darn quick. So I'm going to go ahead and give my stamp of approval and <laughs> say that you should, if you have multiple hard points for weapons, you should maybe consider using a couple distortion cannons or distortion repeaters along with your laser cannons and laser repeaters. On that note, talking about cheap things, I wanted to take a look at some other stuff on here. You know what? I'm going to make it so you can actually see my cursor. And do we see? Yes, we see the mouse on the screen. Okay. Um, I don't mess with these missiles. And, and here's the thing. When you have servers that are low in performance, I, have, I, have, I don't have my missiles work at all. I click on missile operator mode, and it just stays a white circle. It doesn't matter how close or how far I am. It doesn't lock on. And then some days I get on, it locks on fine, and there's 50 people on the server. Um, some days it locks on, and it doesn't, like, it won't fire. Some days it locks on, it fires, and the missiles are all crazy. And then some days, this is, these are the rare days, I'm able to lock on, I'm able to fire, and they actually hit the target like they're supposed to. Um, sometimes I've seen the bad guys use countermeasures like they're supposed to, and that's okay. I get it. You know, they should have them too. But... Oh, there's, I, I hope server meshing is the answer to a lot of our issues here, but let's, let's get out of missiles. Cause I, I'm not here to talk about missiles. The meta on missiles right now until missiles work till we have better server performance for me, it doesn't even matter. Um, it's all about guns right now. Um, so let's talk about shields. So you can see that the Vanguard here comes with military grade C shields, 7,500 hit points. Not bad, but let's look at the other military shields. Okay, so the the full stop is the uh, grade C. The grade B is the coverall shields, and they have 8,250 hit points. And then the grade A are the FR-76s. Those are your size twos. And they go for 8,625 hit points. So the most hit points are the grade A's. Perfect. That makes sense. But the military grade A's, per shield are going to cost you 38,250 per shield. If we go to the civilian version of the grade A's, which are the seven MA Lorica's. Oh, look, it's the exact same amount of hit points. And these go for 30,000. So do you want to pay 38,000 or do you want to pay 30,000 per shield? 8,000 times two, that's 16,000 bucks you save, and you get the exact same performance. The Lorica, I mean, there's, there's, there's a few differences in there, but really what you're getting the shield for is the hit point pool. They charge in the same amount of time. The Lorica is cheaper. It looks like the Lorica has uh, more, like it may give you uh, worse stealth capabilities, but they're the same. They're the same. So with the shield meta, you really have three shields you're going to pick from. Grade C, I mean, I guess you could do grade D, but grade C, grade B, grade A. My recommendation for shields is to go grade A civilian. It's always cheaper, and it's the exact same amount of hit points as in the military grade A's. That's just how it is in 316.1. That's how it was in 315.1. Let's talk about power plants. Power plants, there, there is a difference here in power plants, okay? If we look at the military power plants, you can see that the range varies. I used to just go exclusively with the JS-400 because when I started playing, EMPs actually worked. And 
when someone EMPs you, you had to be able to boot your ship back up. And the JS 400s or the 300s or the 500s, they were the fastest at doing that. Well, the JS 400 gets you 10,625 hit points. Not bad. The civilian version, way less, right? If you go to the best civilian version, the Lotus, less than the military. That's not what I want. If I'm gonna if I'm gonna need to go for the best shields, I'm gonna go to the industrial shields. These diligence shields, um, for the most hit points, they're be they're at twelve thousand five hundred. I'm God, I keep talking about hit points. For the most power, they're at ten thousand. Uh, I'm sorry, they're at twelve thousand five hundred. The JS four hundred's power is ten thousand six twenty five. Gosh, I'm I'm just crazy off today. But. Over here in the little power plant section, look, we're only using 47, let's say 4,800 of our power for this whole load of the ship. And we're giving it 23,000. Where's the extra power going? It's not going into the weapons. It's not going into the shields. And it's not going into the thrusters. So at this point, if I reset it to stock two Maelstrom military grade Cs, I still have 18,000. I don't need to touch it. <laughs> I have 4,800 I'm using out of 18,700. So I don't mess with the power plants and unless this power bar over here hits half or, or higher, then I'll get a better power plant. That's the meta to me. Coolers. It's the same situation with coolers. We, coolers used to be different when, when you had afterburners and stuff, but now the afterburners are tied into uh, the power triangle. Um, right now coolers don't really have a function so these arctic military grade c's sweet if you look at over here at cooling i'm using 434 out of a capacity of 10,400 stock um sure i'm sure the ship needs coolers to function but i don't need to upgrade anything back in the day before the power triangle i would have probably put on snow packs which was the highest in the industrial I don't do it at all anymore. What I do recommend, and I don't worry about it with the Vanguard, Vanguard Warden because the stock quantum drive is perfect, but that you do upgrade your quantum drive. A lot of these quantum drives are really bad. Um, for a size two ship, and we'll do a size one and a size three real quick. Um, for a size two ship, the military crossfield, it's the best one in my opinion. It's the cheapest. You can get it port all star for 59,000. And XL1, which is the fastest for size two, it'll run you 94,000. And the Jaeger runs you 74,000. So I highly recommend the Crossfield. It's the time difference from, say, Microtech to Arc Corp, the furthest distance in the game to travel from one planet to another. Um, the, four minutes and 50 seconds with the Crossfield. The XL1 is four minutes and 30 seconds. And the Jaeger is 439. So it's basically. 10 seconds in between them. Uh, so I just stick with the cross field and that's really it. That's, that's kind of the ship meta here. Now let me grab a different ship. Um, I'll grab like a size, uh, one, um, I'll, I'll grab an anvil ship. I'll, I'll grab, well, actually let me grab a starter ship. Um, so let me go with the consolidated outland Mustang alpha. So you can see the Mustang alpha, the stuff it comes with is one, it's missing two guns. And two, it just comes with not great stuff. Um, but that's okay, because it's not that much to upgrade it. Um, so the nose turret, that's bespoke on the Mustang Alpha. It comes with two um, size two laser cannons. Perfect. What I would do in this case, because I, I, I don't have enough guns or enough power, really, is I would, because they are size one mounts, Always gimbal a size one mount because you don't lose anything because then you can put on a size one weapon. So I would go throw on a gimbal on both mounts. And now the ship's fully gimbaled, which is advantage to you. And then I would probably throw on um, two more of the, of the size one laser cannons. Now you could throw on, uh, if, I haven't tried it yet, but if you want to throw on um, the uh, distortions, then feel free. Give it a shot. You got two two lasers, two distortions, um, and see how that goes. You're definitely probably going to have a faster time to kill. Time to kill is pretty important in the dogfighting world here. Um, we can see, oh, I put the M3As on there. They go for fi about 5,300, a little over 5,000 apiece. 
Um, you can easily go down and pick the Omni Skies, which go for about the same. They're about 5,200. Um, size ones, pretty much the same thing here. For the shields, they come with civilian grade Ds. So 1,350, not very high. If we're going to go max shields, um, I would go with the 7SA Concord. 1,725 versus 1,350. If you're interested in dogfighting, I would just recommend that you get the, the best shields um, because that does have a kind of a, as long as you get a grade A shield. The 7SA Concord goes for 12,600, 12,650. The, uh, the military FR-66 is 18,000. And they're the same, same hit point pools. So size one, size two, so it doesn't matter. Go right now, go with the civilian version because it's all about cost. The coolers, don't mess with it. You can see our cooling. We're using 97 out of 388. Now our power, this, this may be an issue where you want to upgrade your power plant. You can see that adding in a couple more weapons, our power is almost maxed. So I would probably get rid of the zap jet in this situation. The civilian grade D, um, 1893 is its power. And I would either go with the military JS 300, which if you highlight on Urkel, it'll show you on the screen. Hey, the JS 300 puts me at 1817. The JS 300 also costs almost 20 grand. If I was going to go with the civilian version, the best civilian version, the ion, oh, the white rose, I get not enough power and it costs 16 grand. If you want the best, go with the industrial Breton. It's going to cost you the most. It'll give you the, the, the most power. But in this case, I just need to be at half is, is kind of what I recommend. So I would go with the military JS 300. 20 grand. I don't mess with the coolers in this situation, but the quantum drive, the rush, it's pretty bad. Um, it's fast ish, but it'll still, you can't even go from our corp to microtech in one jump. You have to stop and get gas. Um, but you can go to crusader to Hurston in five minutes. That's actually pretty fast. Civilian grade C. I would recommend going with a civilian Atlas or even better. The voyage, the voyage is faster than the Atlas by just a smidge. Um, is it cheaper? 17.9 for the Atlas. Yeah, and it's cheaper than the Atlas. I think because it's a great B. Um, but yeah, I go with the Voyage now for size one drives. Um, and it'll take you one jump, Microtech to Arcorp, eight minutes. Crusader to Hurston, five minutes. Um, the Atlas is just a little bit slower, but you'll have a little more, it's a little more efficient. And that would be it for like a starter size one weapons build. Um, let's go to, uh, let's go to like an RSI. Uh, actually, let's go to like a, well, I don't want to do a Carrick. So the Carrick comes with a comma quantum drive. That's the only thing you need to upgrade on a Carrick. The comma is horrible. It's so slow. It's like almost 20 minutes, 16, 20 minutes to go like across the map. You don't want that. Put on a TS2 because it's actually really cheap. Go get a TS2, put it on your, your hammerhead, your, your Carrick, um, those real big ships that use size three quantum drives. But if we're going to do like a Constellation Andromeda, for instance, lots of stuff in here, right? Lots of missiles. I'm not going to touch the missiles. I really like this build, the CF-447s. Um, two of them are bespoke, these ones down here, um, which also means they're forced gimbaled. Um, you can upgrade the other two to size fives. I'm not going to. If I'm going to have some weapons gimbaled and it's going to be forced, I'm going to have all of them gimbaled. Might as well have all of them hit. <laughs> now, this is a lot of DPS on this guy. Sustain 1570. That's a lot of DPS. Maybe you want to go go on there and put a, a there is no there is no size four distortion. Distortions end at size three. They do have scatter guns. You could get in close and put a salvation on there. Um, but I think you just you just leave them here with CF 447s. What you could do is upgrade to Omni Sky uh, 12s. Um, they go for about 41,000 a gun. You can see that the laser cannons have a higher sustained DPS and uh, the fire rate is not that bad. Um, so you'll get more DPS uh, if you go with the Omni Sky with the laser cannon build. It's weird how the, the meta just swaps from repeaters to cannons. Uh, for the man turrets on the upper and the lower, I probably just stick with those badgers. Um, but the cool thing about turrets is you can actually put ballistics in there and you'll have way more ammo. So maybe you throw some scorpions on there. 
I don't know. Up to you. That's the beauty of Star Citizen. Now, this guy has a size three shield. It's a five CA Akura. Um, I think I would go ahead and just upgrade to the Nargon. It's got 15,000 more hit points, but it's going to cost you a hundred grand. So maybe that's not worth it to you. Maybe you want to hold on to that hundred grand. Is 15,000 hit points of shields worth a hundred thousand alpha UEC? I guess if you take it into combat all the time, maybe it is, but you only have one size three shield. Keep that in mind. Um, and then power plants, we look over here uh, with the default uh, double day breaks. Those are fine. You're still way under half. You're good. Now, the Quantum Triumph, it comes with a Bolon, industrial grade C. It's made to last. It's really slow. To go from Microtech to Arc Corp, 13 and a half minutes. That's really slow. First thing I would do, maybe the only thing I would do, is actually go into here into the Bolon and upgrade that to um, an XL1. An XL1 is going to run you 94K. Um, you could put a crop. It's got tons of quantum fuel. That's why I say XL1. You could put a cross field on here. It's cheaper and it's almost as fast. And that's only going to run you at the cheapest 59. I'm just, just at 60,000 at Port Alizar. Um, So maybe just throw a cross field on there. Bam. Good to go. Um, something like a Carrick. I am going to bring up the Carrick. Uh, it comes with this comma. It's six, 17 minutes for Microtech to Arc Corp. Now, as far as the Carrick's weapons, I just leave them alone. Uh, the Barbican shield is a, it's a gray B. They're, they're really good shields. You could go at a higher shield, like, uh, uh, the Nargun, 5,000 more hit points. I wouldn't do it. The power plant, you got tons of power, tons of cooling. The only thing it really needs is to upgrade this, uh, uh, quantum drive to go from the Bolon to go up to a TS2. If you look, the TS2 is the best size three drive. Um, it's the fastest and it also is the cheapest. The the Balandin is 142. The Pontis, which comes stock with like the Caterpillar, great drive. It's like it's like the Crossfield, but of size threes. It's 120, 117 at the cheapest. And the TS2 is 93K. Um, so you just upgrade with the TS2. You spend 93K. Hey, your Carrick is ready to go. Um, so there you go. There's there's the meta I have kind of for ships. Um, take it as you will. Uh I would if I was I would love to see more data and to or or to get comments in here to see if people have been using um distortion weapons in combination with energy weapons as a replacement for the ballistic weapons. Um I really miss having the ballistics. Um the only place where ballistics really can shine right now is on a turret or on uh something with uh like the uh, Ares Inferno, where you have a ton of rounds and you could probably go two, three missions before you need to go back to uh, uh, the port and uh, restock your ammo. Um, it's a repeater. It's a it's a ballistic Gatling. So the fire rate's really good on it. And it's actually a pretty darn good dogfighter. Um, the Ares Ion, on the other hand, is horrible at dogfighting because of the nerf. Uh, it fires much slower and uh, the the projectiles don't really always go to where you're aiming. There's a lot of spread on it now. Uh, they're great for larger ships if you're going after big ships, um, but smaller ships, not so much. But the the Inferno, it just, it's been tearing stuff up. I've been using it with great success. Um, as far as FPS, so FPS has been, th there's really no changes um, because armor in the game is not really physicalized yet. So Heavy armor, medium armor, light armor, there's not much difference. I've died with one bullet on heavy armor. I've died with one bullet on light armor. Same as wearing an undersuit. Um, I have been able to take multiple shots with heavy armor where I couldn't take those with light or medium. Um, so there's probably a benefit of, of wearing heavy armor. Uh, the problem with heavy armor is very expensive. Um, you're probably going to spend 10 grand just for a suit. Um, and if you die, and you're playing solo or something and no one's around to grab your corpse. Um, you're probably going to lose that gear. Uh, my corpse marker has barely worked. I mean, I could count maybe 10 times ever that my corpse marker has actually worked from when I died to take me back to where my corpse is. And even then I have to gear up before I go back in there most times because there's bad guys still all over the place. So, um, yeah, you're probably better off just going in with something light or something inexpensive. 
Uh, the weapons and FPS are pretty much the same as they've always been, um, whether they're ballistic or energy or whatever you're using. Um, you're probably either going to lose it to being shot in the face or shot in your ship or just randomly dying, having the, the good NPC shoot you um, randomly just blowing up for no reason. Um, there's a lot of different ways to die. And I know it's all funny money and I'm not mad at CIG, but I would like the, the systems to be better. I, I would less, I would like less features and less dynamic events. When you have dynamic events happen so often, they become less special, right? Jump town was really cool. The first time I did it. Now that we're on another version of jump town where it got nerfed, it's, it's one, it's not as fun Two, It's not as special because now everybody, everybody is doing it and it kills the server. Um, same as Xeno threat. This last round of Xeno threat was horrible. I, I didn't, I participated in it twice. I didn't even get reputation gains after I, you know, helped kill the interest and everything. I got the money that so that was nice. But other than that, it just wasn't a good time. And I usually don't do any type of nine tail stuff. Um, what else? What else is the meta? The meta for mining. Um, I don't think uh, Urkel lets me bring up mining stuff. Um, I don't think it gives me stats on on the on the mining heads. Let's see. Uh, it gives me some stats. So right now, the meta on mining heads, um, like this prospector comes with an arbor MH one. Arbor is okay. But the thing with the Arbor and uh, Urkel doesn't tell us what consumables we can have. That's what it is. Arbor, you can only, I think it's only one consumable. Um, I think a lot of people have been using the Lancet, uh, which has the lowest power. However, it has the best. Um, it makes the rock the easiest to mine, if that makes sense. Um, I'd have to go over my notes on, on the status of it again. but. Um, when you're in there, it gives you a bigger optimal window and, but it does have the least amount of power. So it takes longer to crack a rock if you can crack a rock, but the Lancet does let you have three consumables. So you could use consumables to surge up and things like that to get to where you need to go. Um, a lot of people still love the helix, which has the most power. So you're probably going to be able to crack almost anything with the helix, but you're, you're going to have more instability and things are going to move around a lot with the helix. Um, it's the most unstable of the mining lasers. But then I think a really good in between mining laser that still has a lot of power would be the impact. Um, I've been using the impact a lot. One, I really like the aesthetic of the beam. Um, but two, it actually gives you a bigger charge window. Uh, it's a little, it's, it's quite a bit more unstable than the Lancet, but it's less unstable than the helix. Um, and it just, it seems to work really well. Um, so I've been using, uh, the impact on my mole. I have my center laser is an, is a Landsat with three filter XLs. Those are consumables that filter out inert materials. So as you're sucking up stuff from the center laser, you're going to filter out most of the inerts. So you're going to get more minerals as you're sucking them up. The other two side lasers, one's an impact and one's a helix. So if I need it, I can use the helix to crack something. Um, um, I can have the impact over there to, uh, just have a little bit more stability if I'm mining because I have different consumable loadouts. So I do a lot of single player Argo mole mining. So, so I think that's it guys. Um, there's some tips and tricks of, of, uh, some dog fighting stuff. Oh, the other thing with dog fighting, if you don't have reshade, um, I'll, I'll I'm going to throw on the, the screen, some dog fighting, um, and going from, you know, the regular screen over to the MVG mode and reshade. I do have a couple of videos on reshade. If you're interested in using the MVG mode, uh, please uh, watch my video for uh, reshade in Star Citizen. It helps a lot, not just with mining, not just with uh, navigating, but with dogfighting. You can actually see, especially if you're in the asteroid field or near the surface of a planet, but it's super dark out. You can see your bad guys. You can see the ground. You can see the asteroids. You can try to avoid running into rocks and debris and stuff like that. So uh, I use that a lot. Um, so that, that'd be, I guess, my last tip and trick. And I think I've rambled on long enough. Um, enjoy the game. I hope this helps you guys out. Um, be nice to each other.
And uh, as Java would say, happy mining.